Okay, we're given the graph of a fifth degree polynomial and we are asked to find what actual function is gonna produce this graph. All right, so let's jump right in. We know it's degree five. What I wanna do first is pick out the zeros or X intercepts or roots, whatever we're calling them right now. So I'm looking at this graph, it looks like we have zeros or X intercepts in three different places. I'm gonna go ahead and list them out as negative five, negative one, and positive three. All right, next up, let's think about their multiplicities. So what we know about multiplicities is we're gonna cross the x-axis if it's an odd multiplicity and we're gonna to touch the x-axis and can't come back the same direction if it's an even multiplicity. So with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and say, well, over here at negative five, we cross the x-axis. So let's make that an odd multiplicity and let's just go with one. The next one we touch and come back the same direction. So we're like, oh yeah, even multiplicity, let's make that a two. Now the thing to remember is these multiplicities, if you add them up, they have to add up to the degree of the polynomial. So since we know it's a degree five polynomial, that last one here at positive three touches, comes back the same direction, it must also be a two. That way one plus two plus two adds up to five. Okay, from here, let's try to create factors that go hand in hand with these zeros. If you'll recall, X minus whatever our zero is, has to be a factor um, of this polynomial. So if we have a zero at negative five, we can say X minus negative five or X plus five. And then the multiplicity, that's gonna be the exponent that is attached to this factor. All right, with negative one, we can say X plus one goes as a factor, multiplicity two, so exponent of two. And then finally, X minus three goes as a factor, again, multiplicity of two. So we're almost there, but there is one other thing we have to be careful of. There could be some sort of scalar multiple out here, meaning a constant. Um, so either a stretch or a compression going on out here. To account for that, what I wanna do is just kind of include a variable for the time being. And A is what I'm gonna call it. That's what we traditionally call it. Um, and let's locate one additional point that we're really confident is gonna be on our graph. So where I tend to go to look for these is at the y-intercept. So it appears on this y-intercept that that's between zero and 20. So we could say that's the ordered pair zero comma 10. So we have an x value and an f of x value or a y value. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the 10 for f of x on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna replace each of the x's with zeros. Okay, so now we have an equation that only has the one unknown. We don't know what A is. So let's do, do some solving down for A. Everything else is constants. So we have 10 equals A times zero plus five is five. Zero plus one is one squared gives us a one. I'm not gonna write it here. Zero minus three is negative three. When we square it, we get a nine. So now we're at the point we have 10 equals A times 45. To get A all by itself, we'll divide by 45. Okay, so that'll put A on the right-hand side all by itself. With a little bit of simplifying down, these are both multiples of five. We can say A is gonna be two ninths. All right, the only thing left to do is take this value for A back up, plug it back in where A was here, and we'll have our function. So we can say F of X, Function we're looking for is gonna be two ninths multiplied by X plus five, multiplied by X plus one squared, multiplied by the quantity X minus three squared. I'm not gonna take the time to multiply this all out. That would take a long time to get into the general form. Let's just leave that as our answer. Nice polynomial function in factored form. It's gonna give us this exact graph up here. All right, hope this helps out when you're given a graph, trying to find the polynomial that produces that same graph. Good luck.